Hello everybody, welcome to Spring Boot. In this short video, I am going to explain how to run Spring Boot applications from command prompt or terminal, and also how to create a jar file and execute the same jar from any machine uh, using Maven. So let's understand. So, you know, whenever you build a Maven project, uh, you will get to see the Maven wrappers, MVNW and MVNW.CMD. So we will understand these two things. And then in order to run our Spring Boot app from the command prompt of the terminal, so we need to use Spring Boot hyphen colon run actually. So how we are going to do that, that also we are going to understand. And the last is how to create a jar file and how to locate the jar file which is created and how to run it actually. So this will be the agenda and let's now understand uh, through an example. So I'm actually uh, navigating to my project which I have created in Eclipse. So if you see here, I have a, a student tab. Uh, you know the Maven directory structure. So you have SRC main Java where all your Java codes will be there and SRC main resources and you will have all your static files and application properties. And importantly, you will be having this pom.xml. And if you observe the standard directory structure provided by the Maven, you have this Maven W and Maven W.cmd. These two are called wrappers, Maven wrappers. So whenever you create a Maven project, automatically these Maven wrappers will be as part of your direct structure. That means, you need not to install Maven separately. So in my uh, system, I haven't installed Maven at all, but I'm creating a Maven project. So these Maven wrappers actually enable me to do Maven things. You know what Maven does actually in a Spring Boot application? It does three things. It actually um, manages dependencies. It actually enables us to create the build file and it provides a standard directory structure as well. Okay, so now I would like to run this particular application. And before I run, let me explain quickly what I did actually. So I'm going to create a simple uh, REST API for my student app. So here I'm going to write uh, two web services. So one web service is actually to get the students and another is actually to uh, create the students. Okay, so I'm not connecting to the database. I just actually um, make a request through my client that may be a browser or a postman. And then I'm going to get the results. For that, uh, you know, Spring Boot will give us the main um, class. And this is my main class and I haven't been, done anything over here. Then I have created one bean that is student.java. So how did I create the student.java? So it's a, uh, bean class, just a POJO, plain old Java object. And I have just mentioned uh, the data this student object is going to contain. So that is ID, name, GPA, and city. And I have made uh, fully encapsulated. And I have used Lombok. So what is Lombok? It's a bean management framework. So when I use at the rate data, so I'm going to get all these getter, setter, etc. And no other constructor and all our constructor are provided uh, with these annotations which I have used. Lombok, of course, is a bean management um, a framework which helps us actually to make our uh, beans uh, very neat, okay, and precise. Okay, so you can you can actually need not generate the boilerplate code. See how simple my class is looking. So that's the use of um, a Lombok, of course. Okay, so this is my class. And then uh, if I go to my controller, so what I did here is, so I have a request mapping to slash API. So the, my first uh, endpoint is going to be slash API. And then of course, I have one uh, method called load actually. So this loads all the student objects. So I'm creating five student objects. So here five, four student objects I have created. And the fifth one, I just, I am straight away adding that to my student list, which is my array list actually. And whenever a request mapping to slash students with a get method, 
So I have the get mapping and it's actually calls this load method and gets all the students and returns the student list. Whenever the student list is returned, uh, that student list is getting converted um, to a JSON array. And in the background, Jackson will work actually. So JSON to object mapping will happen and vice versa is also possible. And then I will actually create one student. Okay, so for that, I am writing add student uh, service, uh, whereas the mapping is to same slash students, but only the method differs it's because I'm creating. So that's a post activity, a post action. So whatever the student object that I'm creating, I will actually get it to the student. So this binding will happen. So that means JSON data is going to map to my student object, which I have, uh, which I have created. And then I'm just printing the details on the console. At the same time, I am returning the student back to my client. So here, uh, whenever you take the data, so JSON to student mapping will happen. And whenever you are returning, object to JSON mapping will happen. So this all will be done in the background by the Jackson. So Jackson is Java plus JSON. Fine. So this is my application. So let me also show you my application properties. So here I just made my server port equal to double eight double eight. So default port is eight zero eight zero. You can actually change to whatever the port number that you wish, and without conflicting to other port numbers. And finally, let me go to my pom.xml. So here you know what is pom.xml project object model. You will be having your Maven version. Then you will have metadata about your application and the dependencies. I have used Spring Boot starter web and Spring Dev tools. Spring Dev Tools comes up with live reload server. So any changes you do in your application will be dynamically um, evaluated and you need not to restart the server again and again. And I'm using Lombok, so I have this Lombok dependency. And by default, you will be having the Spring Boot Starter test. And importantly, if you see here, so in order to build our application, so we have this plugin actually, Spring Boot Maven plugin. So how we are going to build actually, so this build is possible with this particular wrappers which are provided in my application. Fine, so let me now run this application. So I just click and run as a Spring Boot app. So now I will be navigating to any of my browsers here. So I have a browser. So now you can initially you see Stormcat started and port double eight double eight. Let's go to any browser. And here, let's say localhost colon double eight double eight, right? And I have the mapping to the endpoint slash API slash students. Okay, so I'm getting all the students. Uh, this is actually my JSON array. If you talk, if at all you would like to see as a raw data, you can actually see this array. My uh, student list is getting converted to JSON array actually, right? So with browser, we can actually make only get requests. So if at all you want to see that request, just say control shift I and go to this network and let's refresh. And you can see that the request actually was made is a get request here. All right, so it's a get request. So with browser, you can actually make site a get request only. You cannot send uh, data from the browser without uh, any client application, right? So in order to test uh, creation of a student, so I need to go to my postman so which is actually the client a very popular client which we use so to test our rest apis so now when i say get i am actually getting all the students so just like i got in my browser and i would like to post also so let's see whenever i post i'm having the same um, endpoint uh, api endpoint and I'm posting one student a student has id name gp and ct and how did i write this um, service. So whenever a student is posted, uh, that JSON data should be mapped to my student object and I'm printing on the console and I'm returning it back actually. So when I post, I will get the same student back as an outcome. So let me post this and send. Now you can actually see whatever the student object I sent, it's actually posted over. Uh, it's actually uh, returned. Okay, so at the same time, I'm printing on the console. Let me actually verify my console. And here, so whatever the student data I posted, actually getting printed over here. Fine, so 
yeah so it's working right so whatever i posted here is actually displayed on my console okay so this is a working uh, restful api application a restful service application with the two services fine so that's fine so our objective is not this we should have a working we should have a working application but our objective is different right so what is the objective so we need to run we need to run this particular application from the command okay and also create your file and deploy anywhere you wish and again run actually so that that's the objective so in order to do that so what i'm doing i stop my application and let me check actually here if i ask for students so this time it will not be working because my server is not up okay i have closed my server actually so let me close this developer tools so unable to connect At the same time if you go to your postman and ask for the students and you will be getting no data because server is not up so now what i do i will actually run this application from the command prompt so how to do that so in order to do that first you should know where actually exactly your application is located in your machine so just identify that by going through right click and go to the properties and if you go to the properties then you can actually see your path here right see users tell download student app slash student app right so now what you do just actually copy this go to your command prompt and go to your path actually yeah so this is my path right so here i just need to run my application so how to run in order to run we have this wrappers actually so two wrappers that's what actually i am trying to tell you over here the first one here is mnw and mnw.cmd so if you are on windows you have to make use of mnw.cmd like this okay and if you are on linux or mac when you are using a terminal you can actually say dot slash mnw only cmd is not required so one for windows and one for mac and linux actually and then you have to use this command spring hyphen boot colon run so since i am on windows what i am going to do i am going to use mnw dot cmd then spring hyphen boot and then i just need to say run so now my application is going to run actually so you can actually see uh, the logs here yeah now you can actually see here tomcat started on port 8888 okay so now let me actually navigate to my browser and just ask for students since my application is running then i can see actually all my students at the same time i can actually go back to my postman and ask for the students and i could able to get it right in fact i can actually test post also and send and it's working right so this is the first object running your spring boot app from command prompt or from the terminal fine so let me go back to my terminal and just press control c and it will ask you to stop it so let's say s and your application is now stopped right so in order to test again you go uh, and ask for students and your application is stopped right so you will not have the server running so you will be getting connection error same is the case with your postman as well so now coming to the second objective so what is the second objective creating the jar file and executing right so you can deploy actually so when you create a jar file you can actually take that jar file alone to any machine or send to uh, people whomever uh, they have to deploy that and you can run that particular jar file so this is actually deployment right that's what we say spring boot actually is easy to develop production grade applications so you you can create application you can run it you can build and then you can deploy right so how we are going to do that let me actually show you so for that first we have to make use of the package command mnw package so it packages actually it packages so it packages to either jar or var 
so that you will be mentioning at the time of creating the project itself right so for example if at all i want to create a project so this packaging we are actually mentioning here so we say um, spring starter project so here we will be mentioning it right so what is the packaging jar or war actually so we will do jar jar means java archive war means web archive so web archive files has to be deployed into a server a jar when you create uh, it will actually get created with all your java things dependencies your tomcat everything comes into the picture actually so our packaging is jar right so that's why a jar file is going to get created so how to do that actually so for that let me actually go to my application and here is my application so and here i am using this wrapper mnw and i am using the command called package mnw package now it packages actually it gives me a build file and it places that build file into the target folder actually so that you can actually see yeah so it's done so you can actually see here um the build file has actually created student app hyphen 0.0, .0 snapshot jar so this got created actually this is my build file so where it created in the target folder actually right so what is the target folder you can see in your standard directory structure there is something called target so if you go to the target now you will be seeing the jar file created so if you're not building so all these things will not be there your target file folder will be empty since we build it so our target the jar file has come up over here right so now let me clear the screen and where the target where my jar file created in my target right so let me actually go to this target and let's see whether this jar is there or not yes this jar is there and it just now created actually now what you can do this jar you just take into your pen drive or attach to your email or send it across to the people ask them to deploy right so how to deploy actually right so just they will download that particular jar file and they will use the command so how to run a jar file we have the standard command java hyphen jar and application dot jar actually so now let me show here so java and i am going to run my jar file so hyphen jar and what is your jar file name so student app so now say stu and tab you press you will get actually what are all there with that name so i have this jar file right so now i am running this jar file right this can be done on any machine where java runtime is available this jar contains even tomcat server also so your web environment also will be there so now let me enter now the jar file runs and it actually starts our tomcat server on port double eight double eight which we have mentioned actually right so you can see tomcat started on port double eight double eight you can actually see here properly if i actually make this little yeah you can see tomcat started on uh, port double eight double eight so let me actually go now and check fine so it's working so let me actually go and uh, go to my postman and again check it's working fine so in fact you can actually check the post also and post is also working that's it so this is how we can actually run um the jar file so i want to stop and then say control c and it's done so that's actually how we can run Spring Boot apps from command prompt or terminal and how we can create jar file and execute. So this creating jar file is an important because when you create an application and it's a small application or a very big application and you have to deploy finally on the client machines, right? So how quickly you can actually deploy using Spring Boot. So that's the magic of Spring Boot. So hope you have understood and uh, hope to see you with uh, new videos soon. Thank you.